What's up everyone? The 88th Master Tournament is officially underway. So today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Rather than an essay breaking down the economics of the TV deal or the logistical challenges of getting 50,000 people to a small town in Georgia, I'm just going to share a laundry list of the things that I find most interesting. It'll be bullet point-esque and some things are quirky and random, but I'm confident you'll leave with an even bigger appreciation for the world's most iconic golf tournament. All right, let's get into it. Number one, RFID tags. Now, Augusta provides each media member with a badge upon arrival. This is obvious. These badges get you access to the tournament and media center each day, but they also contain an RFID chip inside the badge. This is similar to what would be in your tap to pay credit card or in NFL footballs and shoulder pads. It tracks positional data and it allows club officials to see exactly where you're located on the premises at all times. Number two is making the cut. Now, this year's Masters Tournament will award a massive purse. That's no surprise. It's $18 million in total, and the winner is going to receive the biggest check at $3.2 million. However, unlike most other golf tournaments, which do not provide prize money to players who don't make the cut, even golfers who head home on Friday night at the Masters will still receive a check for $10,000. Number three, home rentals. Homes in Augusta, Georgia command insane rates during the Masters. A five bedroom home rented by players, for instance, might cost $30,000 to $70,000 for the week. And brands like Nike or even billionaire attendees often pay six figures for bigger homes to entertain guests. But here's the interesting part. The IRS has a special exemption literally written in the tax code called the Augusta Rule, allowing homeowners to rent out their home for 14 days per year without having to pay taxes on the income. This rule was initially put in place just for Augusta residents, but it has since been expanded to availability for everyone in the United States. Number four, merchandise sales. The Masters will do about $70 million in merchandise sales this week alone. That's $10 million per day, $1 million per hour, $16,000 per minute, or $277 per second that the store is open. The reason this number is so high is because Augusta artificially increases demand by only allowing people to buy merchandise on site, AKA no online sales. This creates huge lines and it's common to see people paying $5,000 or more at checkout, often buying things for family and friends too. And number five is lottery tickets. The masters leave so much money on the table, which we'll get to in a little bit, but one of the primary ways that they leave money on the table is through ticket sales. That's because rather than selling them to the highest bidder in the open market, Augusta selects attendees each year through a lottery system. It's estimated you only have a 0.55% chance of winning. Me personally, I've applied every year for the last 10 years and still haven't won. And you don't get to pick which day you attend, but if you do get selected, you'll save a ton of money as daily passes purchased through the lottery system cost somewhere between between $100 to $150, while daily passes on the secondary market will often cost more than $1,000 or even $2,000 per day. Number six is land value. Augusta was purchased for $70,000 in 1931, and even if we wanted to adjust for inflation, that's $1.4 million today. Given today's assessed value is $200 million, that's a 14,000% gain. And that leads me into point number seven, which is Augusta's expansion. Speaking of land value, Augusta National is expanding a lot over the last few years. They have spent more than $200 million, according to the Wall Street Journal, through an array of LLCs over the last four years, acquiring more than 100 properties and adding 270 acres of land. Augusta has spent this money purchasing nearby strip malls, restaurants, apartment complexes, and homes. And they often pay three to four times the actual value of the property that they're buying. Some of this land has gone towards parking lots and hospitality venues, but the rumor is that Augusta also wants to potentially build a second golf course and maybe even a private exit directly off the highway into the club. Number eight, Map and Flag. Augusta is debuting a new premium hospitality offering this week called Map and Flag. Guests will receive a week-long tournament badge and have access to all-inclusive food and drinks. There will be dozens of TVs and even a private merchandise shop to save people time on the lines. However, I think this is also probably one of the best examples of Augusta's pricing power. The venue isn't even at Augusta National. It's down the street in a renovated shopping center that the club purchased for $26 million in 2020. Yet still, Augusta is charging people $17,000 per ticket and they have completely sold out. Number nine, cheap concessions. Three things in life are certain, death, taxes, and cheap concessions at the Masters. I mean, inflation seems to not even notice that the Masters is going on. From $1.50 pimento cheese sandwiches to $5 beers, the Masters intentionally keeps prices low to ensure that all fans have a good time when they're on the premises. And even if you wanted to test out every single item on the menu, that would only cost you $66. Number 10, beer sales. Speaking of cheap concession prices, 
Don't expect to buy beer until 11 a.m. on Sunday. It's one of these weird rules that have been in place for a long time, and it was actually a previous rule that was in place till 12.30 p.m. on Sunday, with the idea being that no one would drink until church was complete, but the rule was pushed up 90 minutes in 2020, and that's where it sits today. Number 11, the green jacket. The green jacket tradition started in 1937 at Augusta when they bought the jackets from a company called Brooks Uniform Company, so Masters visitors could easily find someone on the course who had accurate information about the tournament. Every Masters winner now gets a custom fit jacket. They get to take it home for a year, but then they must return it to the clubhouse, and it can only be worn on the property after that year. The craziest green jacket story I've ever heard is that someone found a green jacket in a Canadian thrift store in 1994. I believe it was in Toronto. They purchased it for $5 at the thrift store and it later sold at auction for $140,000. Don't believe me? Go look it up. Not a bad trade right there. Number 12, I just want to talk about the idea that details matter a lot at Augusta National. This place is incredibly precise with everything at the Masters. I'll give you a few examples. Magnolia Lane, for instance, is exactly 330 yards long and there's 61 magnolia trees on each side. The clubhouse has a secret wine cellar with more than 30 pages of the world's most exclusive wines. Employees study where each player's locker is located beforehand so they can show them exactly where to go. The food is intentionally wrapped in green packaging so it can't be seen on TV if someone litters. The fairways are cut to three eighths of an inch. The greens won't be longer than an eighth of an inch. And the grounds crew is so good that they can and replace entire pieces of sod no matter where it is on the property within just 15 minutes. Number 13, the champion's dinner. We all know Augusta gathers each previous Masters winners for a champion's dinner every Tuesday before the tournament officially begins. The previous year's winner gets to pick the menu. My favorite is a 21-year-old Tiger Woods making everyone eat cheeseburgers, french fries, and milkshakes. And while Augusta National provides the chef and the service crew, they also make the prior winner pay for the meal. Number 14, and one of my favorite things is the media rights. When we talk about the Masters leaving money on the table, most of this is actually coming through media rights. The Masters has one of the most unique TV agreements in sports history. Rather than selling the rights to a large network for hundreds of millions of dollars, they quite literally give the rights away to ESPN and CBS for free. It's a year-to-year -year handshake deal. There is no on-course sponsorship signage, and the Masters will only work with a handful of blue chip brands each year, giving them just three to four minutes of commercial time each hour. And the primary reason for doing this is simple. It gives them complete control over the broadcast and what is shown on to everyone else on television. Number 15 is tax status. Now, this is one of the more unique things about Augusta National because unlike most golf clubs, which are nonprofits, Augusta National is actually registered as a for-profit corporation. This, of course, requires them to pay more in taxes, but they do it anyways because it means they don't have to share anything with the public. We're talking member list, income, financial holdings, expansion plans, or anything else. Simply put, they value privacy more than the taxes that they have to pay. Number 16, private jets. More than 1,500 private jets will land in Augusta this week for the Masters, paying upwards of $3,000 in landing and parking fees. And the public side of the airport will be busy too. Now, a lot of people fly into Atlanta and then make the drive down to Augusta, but the Augusta airport gets really busy during the tournament as well. They see about six times more arrivals than normal. Given on a typical week, they would see about 5,000 people coming in. On Masters week, they're gonna see about 30,000 people this week alone. This requires 100 extra employees to be working at the airport during that time. Number 17, landscaping perfection. I wanna talk about landscaping, and quite frankly, we could do an entire episode on landscaping. It's one of the most unique parts of Augusta. It's estimated that Augusta spends tens of millions of dollars annually on landscaping, which really shouldn't be a surprise. However, the course's most impressive feature might be the sub-air systems located beneath each green. These systems keep greens consistent throughout the entire tournament. They suck up water when it rains, and they add moisture when it's hot. But here's the craziest part. Someone slipped at Augusta National a few years back and hurt themselves on the walkway. So Augusta ripped them all up and put these sub-air systems underneath the walkways as well so no one slips anymore. Number 18, Eisenhower Cabin. Dwight D. Eisenhower is the only U.S. president ever to become a member of Augusta National. He never actually attended the Masters himself, but Eisenhower made 29 trips to the property during his presidency, playing 210 rounds during his eight-year term. Even better, the Secret Service worked with the club to build a safe place for him to stay when he was at the club. It's called Eisenhower Cabin, and it's still used on the property today. And that leads me to point number 19, Ronald Reagan. Speaking of Eisenhower Cabin, there's a crazy story of when President Reagan was vacationing at Augusta in 1983. He stayed at the cabin since the Secret Service had already built it for maximum protection. But one day, when he was out on the course, a local man smashed through the gates of Augusta National with a gun and tried to hold him hostage in the pro shop. Nothing ended up happening 
happening as the Secret Service got him off the course and back into the cabin safely. But we got some epic photos like this. And the last thing I want to say is that Augusta's history and allure are what makes the Masters so special. The club cares deeply about its reputation, giving away TV rights for free so they can control everything from commercials to how the course is shown. And with the rest of professional golf more divided than ever, the Masters ability to handpick who plays in its tournament has elevated the world's premier golf to an even higher level than we thought was possible. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel or follow me for more sports business content.